Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be about the Clinton Massacre that began on September the 4th, 1875 in the small town of Clinton, Mississippi. The events that took place claimed over 50 lives and are said to have contributed to the end of Reconstruction within Mississippi altogether. Now, there is major controversy surrounding the Clinton Massacre, and many people still question what really happened to this very day. So, with that being said, let's chat. Clinton A city in Hines County is the 10th largest city in Mississippi. Now, Mississippi, as well as other states in the Deep South, struggled with Reconstruction after the Civil War. After the Civil War, the Republican Party was the dominant political wing of the federal government. The Republicans, they worked hard to restore the national unity and enforce the new civil rights of the black citizens. But the Democrats, on the other hand, they were against unity and rights for black people. So they worked hard to regain control of the people and state government after the Civil War, according to the reports. Now, within the Republican Party, there were radical Republicans. Now, radical Republicans... They were an arm of the Republican Party that advocated for full political and social equality for the newly freed African-American citizens. And they wanted the South to be punished for starting the Civil War. Now, after the Civil War, Reconstruction, it was very difficult in states within the Deep South, such as Mississippi. Now, before we move on, I want to define Reconstruction just a bit. Now, Reconstruction in U.S. history, it took place from 1865 till about 1877. And it was that period after the Civil War when the government, they attempted to integrate African Americans into society as equal citizens with equal rights and reunify the divided nation. Now, I just want to fill you all in on that real quick, just in case you weren't familiar with Reconstruction and the Reconstruction period. Now, as I said earlier, Reconstruction was very difficult when it came to states within the Deep South. Now, one of the things that made it difficult when it comes to the states within the Deep South was the fact that African Americans were a majority of the population within these states. And majority of the population also means that they would control majority of the votes as well. Now, in the upper southern states, where African Americans were minorities, such as Virginia, Tennessee, and North Carolina, Reconstruction, it was somewhat mild and short, but not in Mississippi. Definitely not in the Deep South. Now, by 1875, the Democratic Party and white supremacists, they were doing all they could to oppress the black citizens along with their voting rights. And they mainly restored to serve. I'm sorry. They mainly resorted to severe violence and intimidation tactics. Now, the violence and intimidation was so bad, it led to the reason we are here today. The Clinton, Mississippi Massacre. On September 4th, 1875, in the town of Clinton, Mississippi, Republicans held a barbecue and meeting to introduce the people to the party's candidates who were to be running in the upcoming November elections. More than 3,000 people came out for the event held on the grounds of the Moss Hill Plantation. Now, the Moss Hill Plantation, it had been recently turned over to a Republican doctor after the Confederacy lost the Civil War. 
and over 2,000 former slaves attended the event. I mean, children were running around laughing and playing. The smell of good old barbecue was in the air, and the day appeared to start off pretty well. And several precautions were taken to keep the peace on September the 4th. No weapons or alcohol was permitted. Special police were appointed for the event. And Republican officials even agreed to accommodate the Democrats' request to allow a Democratic candidate to speak at the event as well, according to some reports. Now, other reports say that the Democratic Party representative that showed up He showed up unexpectedly, and he unexpectedly joined the meeting and requested speaking time. Now, Governor Adelbert Ames, he was initially scheduled to speak as a Republican at the event. But he, you know, he kind of felt like things probably wouldn't go as well because he knew about the previous tension. So, Mr. Ames, he asked former union officer and editor of a local Republican newspaper, Captain H.T. Fisher, to speak in his place. Now, for the Democrats, Amos R. Johnston, he spoke for them as a candidate of theirs. And Mr. Johnston, he spoke first. And when he spoke first, he spoke freely without any issue or problems for a full hour. And Johnston, I mean, he was uninterrupted. The hopeful citizens, they listened in attention. And they had no idea that there were agents of chaos within the crowd as well. Now, mixed in the crowd with the people were the white liners. And those were the white liners from the nearby town of Raymond. Now, white liners, they were Confederate veterans. And remember, the Confederates, they were for slavery and did not want it to end. But the white liners, they were Confederate veterans who had become vigilantes and connected with the Democratic Party. And in 1876, the white liners, they took hundreds of African-American lives and believed they could take back the rights the federal government had given black people. And some reports even state that they were the reason the Republicans withdrew federal troops from the South. Now, the white liners, they were mixed in the crowd of people. And those people included nearly 2,000 newly freed slaves, men, women, and children. And not only were the white liners in the crowds, they were also armed with concealed weapons. Now, when former Union officer, now remember the Union, they were against slavery and they wanted it to end. But when the former Union officer, Union officer H.T. Sherman, when he got up to speak for the Republicans and began to speak, a white man began to heckle him. And the man shouted, and I quote, Well, we would have peace if you stopped telling your damn lies, according to the reports. And there goes the match that lit the fire. An argument broke out in the crowd. And when the argument broke out, a black state senator, Charles Caldwell, he tried to calm the crowd and keep the peace. But soon, gunshots began to rain. The gunshots lasted for about 15 minutes. One witness to the event stated, And I quote, the thing opened just like lightning and the shots rained in there just like rain from heaven. Frantic African-American mothers swooped up their children and ran into the woods. They ran in all different directions to avoid the gunfire. One African-American mother even hid her small child in a hollow tree for protection, according to the reports. 
And once the gunshots ended, three white people and five African Americans had lost their lives. Two of the African Americans were children. And nearly 30 people were injured as well. The saddest part of it all is that it's not over yet. Now, even though the newspapers reported the black people who fired weapons were acting in self-defense, the white people, they were not accepting it. Seeing the black people show force enraged the white people. So later that night, they called in other white liners who were connected with the Mississippi Democratic Party from Vicksburg, Jackson, and other surrounding areas to help them with the armed blacks, according to the reports. And amongst the mulatta or white liners, those who came was a group called Modoc. And they had named themselves after a Native American tribe in California. Now, the Modoc, they began an African-American manhunt in Clinton. And over the next few days, the white mob indiscriminately lynched the black people of the town. And one witness said, and I quote, The white liners just hunted the whole country clean out just every black man they could see. They were shooting at him just the same as birds. And another witness stated, and I quote, I was at the Republican mass meeting held that this place Clinton. The Democrats who were on the grounds, they went there for the express purpose of creating a disturbance and of killing as many as they could. You hear a great deal about the massacre at Clinton, but you do not hear the worst. It cannot be told. Now, during the attack, Governor Albert Ames, amongst with, uh, among other citizens, they requested federal assistance. They asked if the military troops could be sent in to restore the order within the town, but their request was denied. They were told the troops would not be sent in, and they would not be sent in to stop the massacre because, and I quote from a President Ulysses S. Grant's words on September the 13th in response to the town's request for help, Grant stated, the whole public are tied out with these annual autumnal outbreaks in the South. Now, those are the former president's words. And not only was the request for help denied, the president, he adopted a policy of non-intervention. And this policy was with respect to Mississippi and the Confederacy on September the 14th, 1875. This left the black people and white Republicans within Clinton without protection. Now, many of the black people, they had fled to the woods and swamps. But when it was all said and done, more than 50 African-American lives were lost. And some names of those whose lives were taken were never recorded. And a white school teacher working in the African American community, he lost his life as well. Now, one would think the violence ended with the massacre, but it didn't. About two months after the November 2nd election of 1875, around about the Christmas season or a little bit after, some of the Democrats within the town of Clinton. They lured Senator Caldwell into the cellar of a local store. Now, remember, Caldwell, he was the black state senator who tried to calm the crowd before the shots broke out and everything. But they lured him into the cellar of a local store under false pretenses of sharing drinks. 
And when the men lifted their glasses for a toast, a bullet came through the window of the cellar and fatally struck Senator Caldwell. Caldwell was drugged into the street to take his last breaths. And as Caldwell laid there in the street while he took his last breaths, according to a white pastor who was said to have witnessed the event, Caldwell confronted his assassins with his last words. And to quote Caldwell, Remember when you kill me, that you kill a gentleman and a brave man. Never say you killed a coward. I want you to remember it when I'm gone. And we're going to end today's chat with these powerful words. But before we go, now some reports say a white man fired the first shot. But others say armed black Republicans started the massacre. What do you think? And what do you think about President Grant's response to the massacre? I mean, just his attitude toward everything all together and his refusal to send help. Please drop your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.